Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you are joining and welcome on my channel. So this is a series which I'm running from last five to six weeks. And uh, every week I bring a friend from my circle who are in the cloud computing space to know their experience, to know their journey. As cloud is growing, so the, that is where the demand is growing. The supply from the people point of view is less. And there is always a confusion that how to start into the cloud computing space, be as an experienced developer, DBA, a network guy, or, or if you are a fresher, there are a lot of new opportunities, job roles because of cloud computing are there in market. And the whole vision of these talks to understand from the experienced people, how they are learning, what is their strategy to learn the cloud and uh, you can get the insights from them. If you want to watch the previous talk, everything available on my channel, you can subscribe to my channel and share also in your circle. And again, if there is any feedback, feel free to reach out to me. So today I have a, one of my friend whom I know from last three to four years when I was in Calcutta. I started my career in Calcutta, which is the Eastern part of India. And uh, I made a good friend circle there. Even I learned a bit with a native language there. So Calcutta has a very special place in my heart. So let me welcome Turja on screen and then we can start today's talk. Hey Turja, good evening. How are you? Hi, How are you, man? I'm doing well. Yeah, so far so good. Great to connect with you back after I think two and a half years since yes, I moved yes, out of yes. India. So, so yeah. So thank you. Thank you so much for having me back. Sure, sure. So how, how's going? You recently moved to the new career opportunity. So how's your new journey? So yeah, I recently back in November, maybe uh, three months back, I switched from Accenture to okay. EY GDS. And this okay. is actually also going to be a switch of city. So Accenture okay. was in Kolkata. And this is finally going to be Bangalore. Maybe not this year, okay. but maybe okay. in 2023, I will also shift to Bangalore. Maybe, okay. maybe, but I will might keep like two weeks Kolkata, two weeks Bangalore, something like that. I will uh, adjust with my, my team, something like that. But yes, and actually in Accenture, I had been around three years. I joined Accenture in 2018, uh, November, and I left uh, Accenture in 2021, November. So okay. around three years. Then I joined DY, but before that, I was also actually in PwC, which is another big four. Right, so right. this is like again kind of a loop for me circle back i'm again joining a big four but mm -hmm. this time i'm joining i joined as an assistant director which is a little bit more a uh, senior role uh, okay. than what i was i left as a senior consultant i joined back as an assistant director and mm -hmm. till now it has been good okay i mean uh, the learning is good and everything is going well so fingers crossed that i can make a good impact in my current organization and learn good things basically at the end of the day right. Sure, sure. Yeah. First of all, congrats and as, as well as all the best. As you mentioned that I know that you are coming from a developer background and it's a big move that you adopt a cloud and now you reach at a very senior low role and as well as a lot of responsibility, you need to manage the team. And another thing is our projects at a large scale. So let's talk about your background that what was the point when you thought that cloud is something for you because you are doing uh, development, you are into the C-sharp and the world of MS SQL. Again, large projects are involve all those framework and languages and databases. So what was the turning point of your career? The point you're asking you to understand because there is a big developer community out there and uh, everyone wants to move into cloud, but uh, uh, there is something confusion always there that what will be the path to take. take it. Yeah. Can, can you share around your journey? Yeah, sure, I can. And yes, you are very correct. There is today a lot of confusion. Obviously, there is a lot of opportunity at the cloud and cloud careers, but also for a new person who is not that much well accustomed to cloud like you and I are today, it's really overwhelming, right? So back actually, so to say this, I started my journey as a Android developer in Samsung back in 2012. So that was my job out of college. Okay. So it was Samsung Research Institute and I was placed in Noida. Okay. So I mostly used to work in Android, which is kind of Java based. So 2012-2013 cloud has actually arrived on the scene, right? I think S3 was released somewhere around maybe that time. 
but i had zero clue very frankly okay many most people in india had zero clue i unlike you i think you had been introduced to cloud at the beginning of your career that is what i felt but i am yeah. kind of like a late entry like m- many people so then i actually at that time i had zero idea of cloud but i wanted to move back to my city so after 2 to 3 years in samsung i came back and then i joined uh, pwc kolkata again as an android developer first but they did not have any android projects at that time so they told me can you learn c sharp because it is kind of like java only it's another programming language can you learn it i said okay let's learn so i started working in 2015 on c sharp and sql so it was a very big project multi million uh, geographically distributed teams so i started on that project the technology stack was c sharp and html javascript in the front end and sql server ssis ssrs in the back end standard microsoft stack okay. and the application was deployed on on prem so nothing mm-hmm. cloud nothing related and gradually i started working on that and at 2016 i became the lead developer of okay. that project only but again no cloud till now okay, okay. then in 2017 we actually started working on another version of that same product but this time we wanted to make it a multi tenant application okay so the last time what we were doing for every single client say you are a client i was going into your uh, say vmware setup or some sort of a data center setup and installing my application there okay that is good for 5 6 clients once you want to do say 100 200 clients going into every single client data center logging in deploying application is very different so we wanted to provide it like every other service like a saas service a product as a service okay. so at that time we got introduced to aws okay but nobody in our team had any aws idea so we actually went to aws actual aws people and we said how can you help us so they introduced us to a company you might know some people from them called techminfi yes yes the yeah. techminfi yeah. was a uh, one of the old managed service providers so right. they started working with us okay. okay so at that time they we were still doing the non cloud coding part i was the lead developer scrum master kind of a role technical lead and they those guys were doing the vpc vm load balancer setup okay and obviously they always wanted to protect their work so they did not want to give us a lot of access also right okay. they were saying you tell us i will do it for you mm-hmm. but actually what happened for example some parts of our program we started architecting also for the cloud for example there was a file upload part where you used to load a file okay uh-huh. so we start and the file used to get loaded onto your server that was initially but then we rearchitected it and we created a small file uploader which used to upload it to s3 okay okay so this so small small changes we were doing this mm-hmm. not kind of like a completely cloud native architecture like today obviously but small small things we were changing we were pushing something on to s3 we were starting using elastic load balancers and all of that thing so at that time i got introduced to cloud but one one good thing i will tell is that i could understand that there is huge potential there okay yeah. okay and at 2017 only i understood i have to learn this because c sharp sql is good but they these are not jobs which are very how to say these are not niche jobs today okay very frankly i am telling you they are very good jobs they are very good thing to learn and you, even if you have a deep expertise there it will also give you a very good job good salary also mm-hmm. but if you think today how it the market is like that right cloud has kind of surpassed those kind of role like say for example you were a java developer Mm-hmm. and say a java developer say is getting getting x as a okay. salary the moment you are becoming a cloud developer yes you are getting 3x wow yes, which is yes. true right? you have said this also it's right. not that everything has changed but just say for example you are a little bit cloud native you know a little bit kubernetes docker you know how to package an application and you are getting the three times jump so at that moment i understood very frankly that this is going to be but again as i told you my leads and my team may, i mean meaning my leadership they were saying no no why are you doing that because i have already have a contract with techminfi to do that right so i don't want you guys to do that i want you to focus on the code so okay. i started learning it outside mm-hmm. my company in a sense okay initially 
and very quickly i did four aws associate level certifications wow okay okay so in two to three months i finished four aws associate life that gave me a huge boost also right and in the meantime i then started taking small small work from them starting maybe for example some of the apis were hosted dot net apis were hosted normally we started mm -hmm. moving it to aws api gateway okay in the beginning of 2018 i shifted some of the things to aws lambda okay okay something yeah. else yeah gradually, exactly so gradually but this was i was doing on my own initiative kind of i was going to my lead and saying let's try to do this using a lambda because i knew mm -hmm. i had to run this somewhere or the other okay yeah so that is how gradually i started doing all of this then in 2018 i got in 2018 november i got accenture which was a completely cloud role wow, wow. in 2018 okay. i got into an azure role before that from 2016 to 2018 i was in aws kind of and then in 2018 to 2021 and even today if you see i am mostly into azure because accenture was an azure shop mostly primarily 80 mm percent -hmm. of the project was azure and even today eva is also primarily an azure shop great okay so, okay so the good the only thing here i want to say to people who are trying to kind of switch right that is everybody might come to you chirag how can i switch so the idea is you might not always get your boss's approval to do something new. Very frankly, right. because yeah, obviously in production environment, yes, it's not easy to tell. agree on that point. Yeah, exactly. And also your boss has a kind of when he hired you, he has thought something, right? He thinks that, OK, I need Chirak for this part. Mm -hmm. Now, the moment you join after two months, if you say, I don't want to do this, I want to do something else. Right. Say, for right. example, you recently joined Orange, right, as a cloud success manager. Say, now you join and say, no, no, I want to work on Metaverse. Right. <laughs> Your boss will be, no, but I hired you for cloud, man. I need you right. for that, right? right. So right. this happens in every single company, every single company and every individual. What differentiates some from the other is they try every single opportunity to learn something new. Mm -hmm. And today, very frankly, that is what I tell everybody. Education okay. is democratized. Okay. Even when we were in college, when we were going out of college, it was very difficult, very frankly. Okay. Maybe even when you started, cloud mm -hmm. learning cloud was much more difficult. There were not so many tutorials. Yeah, yeah. So books. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I remember my days. I am again I, I started in back in 2012 when Microsoft Azure was Windows Azure. But yeah, Microsoft training was there. It was known as Microsoft Virtual Academy. I learned a lot of courses from there. Then there was a platform named CBT Nuggets. That was yes, super yes. expensive because I was in college days and I don't have that money in my pocket to spend a hundred bucks. It was a 99 bucks per month. And yeah, it was, but yeah, I agree that yeah, nowadays the resources are available and the quality resources. Quality so, resources. so yeah, it's all about, you can say on fingertip, the, the way a person search on YouTube, on the, on their favorite search engine. Sources are there. Yeah, yeah. Continue, exactly. And the thing here is that it's mostly what we need now is an initiative from our own and time. Mm -hmm. If you have both of them, then nobody can stop you, very frankly, at this moment. Okay. So that is what I did. At that time, how I started on to AWS, I will tell you, because I was a C sharp developer. I understood there is something called cloud, but I have zero idea, right? I am just, I have zero clue what is cloud. Okay. And I am starting. So how do I start? So the first thing I did, I still remember, I watched around 70 to 80 reInvent videos. Wow. All level one. Yeah, I can understand it. It's like 50 to 55 minutes long, at least 45 to 55 minutes in between or some maybe one hour. Yeah, exactly. Time. Yeah. All level 100 videos I was right. learning without even logging once into Amazon console. I have not even logged into Amazon console. I'm just listening to what those guys are saying. Nothing else. Uh -huh. And it is good. After that, what I did, I set a target. I have to pass AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate Exam. Okay. Right. So then I searched, okay, I have some idea what Amazon is right now. I know that this is AWS, this is cloud, this is that, because I have spent, say, one to two months just watching those reInvent videos. Mm -hmm. Till now, I have not even logged once into the actual console. But I knew I need at least one good course. Right. 
Okay. Even if I get one 14, 16 hours good course, it is good. So then I started in Udemy at that time with 420 rupees. I still remember. Wow. I could buy Ryan Kronberg's mm -hmm. the flagship AWS certified yeah. solution. Yes. which is his first and which is the most awesome very frankly it is still one of the most awesome courses right. and he's and he teaches in such a nice way that you feel no it, i can learn this exactly right. yes I, I personally watch also back in i think three four years back yes i have gone through that that entire course exactly okay. so then i did that mm -hmm. but after doing that also i understood that I still need to pass the exam because even if, for example, I'm doing some labs and something, nobody will give me that level of credibility unless and until I have a few certifications under my belt. Because already there is one good thing that I still follow. Say, for example, you want to be a blockchain expert today. Mm -hmm. One of the good things, if you say, what do I need? To, so we ask ourselves, right? What do we need to do to be a blockchain expert, right? And there is very less people who can answer us very accurately. A very good place is to see the job boards and right. see right. what actual blockchain experts say. For example, McKinsey has released a position for blockchain expert. See their job board and see what they're asking. Exactly. Right. That is a very right. good way to understand what the market is actually asking from you. So I started seeing a few cloud uh, jobs in okay. LinkedIn, other yeah. jobs portal, Nokri.com, and I saw certification was kind of everybody was looking. Certification is recommended. Right, Somewhere right. writing a certification is a must. Is a must and it's a plus. Yes, yes, yes. Still exactly. Did even exactly. exactly. So then I said, okay, let's try to do a few certifications. So I started doing a few sample tests, and then mm -hmm. I understood oh, there is still some gap. So I then bought a few practice tests from Viz Labs. Okay, okay. So they cemented my knowledge, but I did not try to mark them in a sense. I was okay. seeing a question, I was seeing the answer, I was going through the documentation and white paper and trying to relate it. Okay. So in that way, I spent some say another one month and then I took the AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate exam. Okay. So very quickly, I have taken say three to four certification okay. exams and I understand. So that is what I'm saying. There is always a way. Okay. You might say that I am stuck in my job. I don't want to have a chance to do this. I don't have a chance to do that. But the idea is very frankly, there are chances. Even if, for example, your team lead or your lead architect or your people manager is not letting you maybe do cloud stuff every day in the office, mm -hmm. but you can still learn it and very easily and quite, quite without a lot of cost also, very frankly. There is not a lo lot, of co lot of cost involved in that. Mm -hmm. Say Udemy courses are what? 420 rupees. Right. You can get very good Udemy courses. Say today there is Stephen Maddox course. Right. Yes. Which is wonderful course. You can get it in 420 rupees sometimes when the sale is going on. Right. right? Yeah, most of the time Udemy is on sale. <laughs> most of the time they are on sale. 80%, 90% they are giving sale. Right. Yeah. That is what I'm trying to say. But there is still one thing that I also felt when I started giving those exams is that lack of real world experience. Yeah, so right. you say I have learned about load balancers and all that. So luckily at that time, the people who were interviewing with me were also getting started. Okay. Okay. So they also did not know a lot of cloud. I also did not know a lot of cloud. Okay. So they hired me. But today things are different. Today there are many people. Say for example, today you are taking an interview of a guy. You will ask very real life questions. Right. right. Like how do you architect this? How do you architect that? You will not simply ask, okay, what is AWS profile? What is right. an AWS CLI command? But certifications are lacking in that sense. Very frankly, certifications I have also, you are a certification master, but I have also given my share of exams and you will see they are kind of like pinpoint, right? You understand this, you under, you you do that. How do you do this? How do you do that? What is this attribute and stuff like that? Even the professional level exams, even though they are a little bit trickier, but still, if you go through 100 questions, you can still kind of crack them in a sense. But actual interviews were much more tougher even today. Mm -hmm. So that is what I have felt. And that is what I want to tell everybody here who is listening is that even when you are doing a very, very small thing, think about how you can scale it in an enterprise. 
exactly yeah this is this is a very important aspect because no longer the days we are talking about few thousand few hundred thousand nowadays having a maybe few million or tens of million users for any application is is just a thing right because and our expectation from the end user point of view that we are looking for a what i can say very nice user interface and a fluid fluid experience that yeah it need to work like a charm we don't want to wait for a 5 second that something is loading going so yeah agree agree on that part that the understanding we need to make you make our thought process and mind map around that area then i i think that will be a good stepping stone as you as you are sharing yeah right no exactly so basically see the idea is that cloud is something that the people who made cloud like amazon azure they put a lot of effort into making it very simple to get started so it's very simple to get started you will learn a course and you will feel like i know cloud i can do this i can do that i am uh, it's like a very very nice to get started but actually it's very difficult to scale it across an enterprise right so easy to get started with but difficult to maintain or scale that is what i how i describe cloud and that is where architecture plays a very very important part and i have seen people okay who have actually been very overwhelmed or struggled with kind of trying to learn cloud they are trying to see okay what i will do there is kubernetes there is docker there is traffic ambassador labs engines ingress how do i know these so many things are happening at the same time very frankly every reen when they um, they publish 700 800 new notifications right. right there is so many things that is very difficult but the very fact and this is something i presented on another talk also a few days back the essence of architecture Mm -hmm. the foundational blocks are still the same so it's not that we want to develop scalable apps only today mm -hmm. we have been wanting to develop scalable apps even 40 years back mm -hmm. everybody loved scalability even then they love scalability even now but now with the advent of cloud and some of the tools like kubernetes and stuff mm -hmm. obviously it is much more easier to implement scalability but people need to think like this way that okay why am i starting with kubernetes or something the reason is that why should i learn kubernetes so the why before how and what is the why because the business asked for a scalable application mm -hmm. if the business has asked for a normal application without say scale say 100 users i don't i can just create a monolith i don't need to adopt a microservice architecture mm -hmm. so the idea that is what i'm trying to say so even say for example i'm telling you i have faced questions from many juniors even in my two team mm -hmm. that say for example many people come to me and saying i how uh, i am not getting any idea about cloud architecture i want to be a cloud architect but i am just writing scripts mm -hmm. i am just writing scripts and something like that but what i said to them is that yes say you are writing a script okay say so a very simple powershell script to get a list of AM amis okay and generate a backup report this is something i also started with like everybody starts with this kind of simple stuff mm -hmm. but you ask the question where is my script going to run mm. it yeah. needs some compute right it needs some compute where will it run then ask okay what happens if that vm goes off uh huh right you should ask this question to your architect who just gave you that small piece of code so that architect just give you a small piece of code to write but you should go and ask him what happens if my application goes what happens if tomorrow 200 people request this report at the same time should i put a message bus before it right right should i add a rate of throttling before it mm -hmm. so these questions we need to ask So even a small script, even a very small script, as small as taking the backup of an Azure virtual machine, can lead to a very nice architecture in the backend if you start thinking at that level. Exactly. Yeah. For example, redundancy, fault tolerance, everything is needed in that application. Say observability, which is a very nice thing today with cloud exactly. native, right? right? Even if a small script fails, how do I know? Mm -hmm. Say somebody will say, "Okay, I will log it to this file." Yeah. But if the VM goes, how will I get that file? Right. right. So somebody will say, "I will call an API to log it to CloudWatch." Okay. Say that API call fails. What happens? 
right so these questions if we start asking then in our mind we start becoming a little bit better mm -hmm. cloud architect and we can actually map even as a very normal developer we can start thinking about architecture so yeah. this is my take on it very frankly no oh, sure sure you cover a lot of things that you yeah, have from android developer that how you come to okay you switch you you take a challenge because again you were in android but again the fundamentals was clear for the java and all the oops and then you were able to easily pick up the c sharp and the world of microsoft stack and then then as you shared that you started your journey you put a target on yourself apart from your work you started thinking that where you can put those services to make the architecture more resilient and maybe more efficient and again from the cost point of view as you mentioned that you were working with some another um, we call it as like as your partner network the partner from the as your aws ecosystem and they were handling it was even not your scope but you try to go beyond that to understand even maybe it may happen like it, bosses not giving you the full permission and uh, but but yeah it 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 give you spark and then like you are talking from again uh, a deep developer mindset that yeah the throttling part the all those things yeah i am coming from the infra background like i am i'm mostly into infra so i, I understand like i was part of such discussions with the customer developer team and even in in my organization in my previous organization like understanding all those things so i i, I think yeah it's it's important that and and it's a common thing nowadays as well as the resources part is there and you very like i really like to appreciate that you put the certification in a right point of view that it is not that you were just in hurry to watch watch a course and next is set for certification two months you just watch maybe maybe 50 to 100 reinvent videos and again lot of quality content there i always follow the my first source is reinvent video if i'm trying to see some new service like what was the service basics and what is the use case for sure there is a use case video some customer is sharing it may be a 5 minutes talk but it it give a glimpse that how it is working in the industry exactly uh, and then yeah yeah resources are nowadays uh, on our tips and again it's just mm, dirt cheap and uh, anyone can start learning and again True. time management and all these things are important really yeah. so see very frankly i will tell you why i wanted to get into club right basically because i understood there is good money there okay money yeah. is money money money. There. Yeah. Yes. money is still okay. one of the priority for everybody and it's a very great motivator very frankly right okay so the idea that i have here is that everybody wants to get paid more say today for example a java developer who is getting say 20 lakh per annum which say 6 to 8 years of experience he will see if he doesn't upskill tomorrow his same company will hire somebody with say 6 years of experience with 24 lakh per annum just because he has implemented some projects on aws which is the truth that is what is happening to the in the market even for example when i was in accenture i used to hire for my team so at the end of my tenure in accenture i used to lead a team called ccoe cloud okay. center of excellence Yeah, yeah. Now that this is a new term, and I believe yeah. most of the companies are trying to build this. Exactly, thing. they are building an architect, DevOps, and all those people are joining and become a SME team. If I can. SME team, and the idea is to kind of push best practices across an enterprise. Exactly. So I actually scale the team from two to thirty-four people, wow. but hiring people is very hard because somebody else is giving them an offer, which is the truth. So cloud is very much in demand. now there are two things here that is very important to understand so one of them is that you need to get that interview call first right so an interviewer doesn't know how good a person you are how how authentic you are or something he just sees a piece of paper maybe a cv or a linkedin profile nowadays people send share their linkedin profile their github profile that is only thing they have right so at least to get an entry into that interview you need a good profile at backing you up so that is why i say to everybody i coach or i mentor that have a very good online presence earlier these things were not needed very frankly when i started 
nobody used to ask about how many followers you have on linkedin whether you are active on different profiles are you mm-hmm. writing blogs do you have a youtube channel this did not matter at that time but today you will see very frankly people are starting to expect that i actually got my job in ey based on people who followed me on linkedin wow and they yeah. saw that i am doing a lot of work on linkedin i'm extremely active they said okay do you want to join ey and stuff like that and actually this is happening to many people more and more people are getting jobs on linkedin mm-hmm. because of their activity and they are trying to do a lot for the community so this is very important and certifications also play a role here so it is very true that maybe what you are learning in certifications might not help you 100% in doing the actual job right Mm. but still it is very important so that you get that call to get that call you need all of this so this is number one number two is to pass the interview so you will see very frankly there is a meme going around that the only time i heard about kubernetes in my company was when somebody asked me during the interview interview yeah after that yeah 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 okay. so I, yes so kind of yeah. you can see that people will ask you a lot of things on this and that but then actual work might disappoint you but that is the reality you need to pass that interview right otherwise how will you get that job so to pass that interview you need to understand a lot of things keep a lot of concepts handy but maybe you are just doing very very mundane stuff in the actual job so that is what i tell everybody that the job is the last stage you first need to get an interview call then you need to crack that interview and then you do the job people are always sometimes like uh, i don't know whether the work will be good or not right mm-hmm. nobody knows whether the work will be good even in google somebody might be doing something very irritating or monotonous right and there is always a chance you can change things shake things up when you join but you have to join you have to pass that interview and for that you need a lot of stuff working for you to crack one interview cracking a interview is not a very easy thing to do right at our time maybe it was still a little easier people were just starting on cloud but today you will see even college professionals meaning people who are in third year have mm-hmm. seven eight google cloud certifications right right yeah very frankly and yeah, yeah, google, it is giving them free certification options via quick labs you are getting swags if you uh, certify amazon is giving an aws educate program so more exactly. and more you can see your juniors are kind of catching up with you exactly yes yeah. yes then how how do you compete with a college guy who has a lot of time right a college guy potentially has a lot of time to do all a lot of certification so then the next question comes what i did in my java world what i did in my linux world did did it go to win mm. exactly no. yeah very very important the experience obviously matters yeah exactly so nothing has gone to when cloud that is what i said cloud is nothing new i mean the concept might be new yeah. but i have actually worked on it right i have written a java program in a mm. normal id like eclipse and i have written the same program in lambda obviously i had to change a little bit of my thinking but my java code mostly stayed the same whatever principles i learned they are still the same so let's me give you a very small example okay today you will see one of the very strong foundations of cloud native architecture is single responsibility right okay. so they are saying microservices should follow a domain driven design and every single service should do a single and single thing only exactly right? yeah. so everybody is talking about this but if you go back even 10 years 20 years there is something called solid principles in development s o l i d wow. so the s of solid is actually standing for the same thing single responsibility wow. yeah. so that is what i'm trying to say things have not changed that much the mm-hmm. same solid principle is getting coming as if it's new but no it's not new okay. say for example i will give you another very small example that one of the features of cloud native is immutable infrastructure true right everybody knows right. we are using terraform we should not what does immutable mean it means i should not change my vm after i have exactly yeah if even i have to add one single software i should not rdp into my software and add it i should go to my base image at the software and then create a new vm with the new image that right. is the idea 
right mm-hmm. so this is a new idea but i will give you a very old concept what is the old concept reliability mm-hmm. everybody of us we wanted reliability right every single non functional requirement you will see people will say your client will say no i need a reliable website my website should not go down that is a single exactly. most thing client will say most of all exactly. yeah yeah, yeah fast it should be responsive but it should not go down no matter what it should not yeah. go down so that is what i'm saying an immutable infrastructure is allowing you what it is allowing you you is saying that i cannot change my vm after it is getting created what does that mean to change i need another automation pipeline so i must That's have an automation that. pipeline which can very quickly create a new vm so that same automation pipeline will help me if my vm goes down say my vm goes down mm-hmm. another vm can be very quickly created using the same automation pipeline right. so yeah. what does that mean that means immutability is actually giving reliability exactly yeah that that is where i believe cloud is enabling like i i learned all those concept while i started exploring puppet back in 2015 like on those days chef and puppet was very famous nowadays again there are many tool and ansible is something i i found now in my what i guess is experience and circle that the adoption is more i rarely see the people talking about puppet i'm not sure like what happened from the technology and organization point of view but yeah uh, i learned puppet for a, for a, for few weeks and then that is where this entire came uh, the immutability and all those that how configuration management will happen on the cloud and as cloud is giving us a commodity infrastructure and in the span of few minutes your entire uh, you can say apple to apple infrastructure but your v2 application v2 or new version will be ready and you can uh, switch your traffic around your new version and all those all those things yeah now now i'm getting that uh, you know uh, able to connecting exactly. all the yeah yeah so that is what i'm trying to say so if somebody is strong in his basics yeah say somebody is a good java programmer somebody is a good c sharp developer somebody is very good in handling vm work yeah or somebody is a very good linux sys admin mm-hmm. so it should not be very difficult if you kind of understand some of the concepts with cloud like pay as you go creating stateless architectures even driven all of those things if you can understand then actually you can map those two very easily exactly that is what i say that you should always fo- start from left to right so people sometimes are starting from right to left they are trying to say okay let's learn kubernetes let's see what happens no kubernetes is the end product of a problem the problem was people wanted an easy way to deploy scalable reliable applications and as a result kubernetes started right because containers came then we had a lot of containers we had to scale those containers and then we had to create a container orchestration system and that container orchestration system is now kubernetes and today kubernetes developers or kubernetes maintainers are getting paid like crazy right very frankly kubernetes people might get even i don't know maybe even 5 6 of years of experience they might get 60 70 lakh if they know really good kubernetes even today here in india that is the kind of market there so that is where another very important thing that i learned in my career is that you need to focus on something that is a very little bit difficult for others to step meaning i will tell you say today everybody knows basics of s3 right yeah. so say you are getting paid 20 lakh you also know i need to keep my files in s3 normal files i a uh, 80 lakh paid engineer say for example i also know the same. then what extra value am i adding Mm-hmm. Right. so that is also very good thing you have to keep in your mind when you are trying to get a new job or get that high paying kind of like a cloud architect kind of a role is that what extra value can i learn that some people will have difficulty in learning and that is where your past experience can help you because a college developer might do five certifications mm-hmm. but they have no idea for example how a rabbit mq can fit as a message bus in an enterprise architecture exactly so you have that experience you just take that add a little bit of cloud flavor onto it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. basically you add cloud onto your existing package so people are trying to do so i have friends who mm-hmm. are saying i need to learn cloud man my I'm, i'm i need to increase my salary i need to learn cloud mm-hmm. so should i start with this? should i start with that i say 
take a step back okay okay see what you are already good at he's saying i am very good in j2 ee i am very good in java enterprise edition i'm saying okay now think about how you can containerize that application so that skill set is still your primary skill set you have built it over say 5 7 8 years and that is your differentiator tomorrow if you are say today for example everybody has access to the same resources like so stephen okay. marek's course even you can read i can read a college yeah. student can also read exactly. so if you are just reading that course and you come to me for an interview i will always hire that college student because i can pay him less right right yeah so that's also why should i hire you why should mm -hmm. i hire you? what extra are you bringing so what extra whatever you have learned the experience you have say for example in handling 40 50 hundreds of linux uh, uh, clusters that is the experience you have and that experience does not go to waste just because you are going into the cloud right you right. just need to add a little bit more flavor into your cv basically yeah really really you bring lot of important insight and especially from a developer point of view because you become a developer then you become a team lead and you build a team as you share that from a single digit to almost 30 plus people it's not again a easy job and then keeping keeping yourself updated is is something you put lot of effort even i am following you following your regular uh, linkedin post you started studying about uh, i'm not sure the course but you you are taking some course in bits pilani if i if i remember it correctly yes, yes, yes. that is again the academic part along with your full time job and then you are putting lot of cloud native uh, learning i see the terraform and you also creating a videos yeah guys just want to share one important thing which you bring if you don't know what skill you need to learn for the cloud architect just read the job post or what is it the job boards or job description exactly. because it's not descriptions no longer the same what it was 10 year ago even let's say the example as tujha was sharing for a developer it is no longer just a java or c sharp it is obviously there there is something of cloud flavor will be there and then it may happens again depend upon the organizations certification may be a must or it may be a add on okay so so from there start preparing your mindset that what you are going to see and uh, maybe use again the old style pen and paper or if you are fond of digital notes make yourself from that job description what are the areas which you already know or you have experience and what are the new areas or some areas where you have not too much of experience but again resources are out there and you can put efforts and learning and uh, and i think that that is where you can confidently prepare for the interview as well as set your from your side what is the expectation you are looking like what kind of role and uh, and what is the work you want to do so so exactly. yeah let's take a few questions and then okay. maybe we can continue because yeah it is going very interesting i, I can correlate because i am also a computer science background and i studied java uh, it was a six months training slash internship in in my university so so i took a course and uh, i i was working on some small 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 things Uh, in my college days so now i'm trying to recall yeah i heard such words somewhere yeah but but great to know from a developer point of view okay J there is a one question so as you mentioned that here you know about aws and then now from last couple of year heavily working on azure so what's your take again yeah, if you if you have aware about that sap on azure and sap on aws any 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 idea that which is mostly in demand In, so, in your experience yeah see so what i have seen okay that that is not only for acp okay mostly not for acp because you can just go to google and maybe search how many projects are there on acp on aw so normally what people are doing today they have one invest so initially people were doing primarily one cloud then people started doing multi cloud but basically if you see people are again kind of coming back to one primary cloud because why the reason is that there is too much investment not only on the cloud but also the processes and the practices around the cloud mm -hmm. meaning today for example you can say i can run my application on docker right so that is good so then i can run that container anywhere i can run it on uh, uh, even my on prem or azure or aws but docker gives you maybe some code portability 
mm-hmm. but your practices your patterns how to log into a azure vm or say for example how to check my logs in cloudwatch mm-hmm. how to set alerts in cloudwatch is a little bit different from how to set them in say azure monitor right right, right. So the differences are there maybe the idea is still the same but the actual differences are there and then when your l1 l2 l3 support teams start working on an actual query they will be mostly focused on one cloud only it's very difficult for you to hire people who can check google stack driver logs and at the same time also maybe go into azure log analytics so from that perspective what i've seen is that people focus on one cloud and mostly they will try to migrate their sap systems onto that cloud also say for example you have an azure shop okay say 80% of your applications are running on azure now say you have migrating some sap workloads so for example even that is something actually happened in my client interaction when okay. i was in okay so we had a very big project called sap m2c move to cloud okay mm-hmm. those guys they wanted aws offers really today they are a little bit ahead what i feel okay okay is okay. it the kind of capability because they started earlier as simple as that they had more time to excel right mm-hmm. they are always a step ahead of every other cloud very frankly because mm-hmm. they started earlier and they are also keeping the same pace so if you start earlier than me and you have the same pace as me then how can i overtake you right right i can only overtake you if you lag a little behind mm-hmm. then even if i am a little late if i have a high pace i can overcome you but say azure has a huge pace gcp has a huge pace but aws is also not stopping right AWS is also doing its thing, right? So the idea here is what I want to say is that in that project, the people, the SAP architects, they wanted to do on AWS, right? But we actually, the cloud center of excellence and other client cloud platform architects, CIO level, they said no, I cannot allow that. Mm-hmm. I cannot allow even if AWS offers five more features mm-hmm. and even ten percent less cost. Say for example, hypothetically. then also i cannot allow you to go on to aws you have to go on azure because my practices my patterns my finops initiatives everything is tailored for azure i cannot do all of that for you so the coming to that question so the idea is i think personally aws might be a little ahead maybe in terms of features but very frankly not that ahead for somebody to ship completely change course and do something else exactly right? that is my take on this so it's mostly dependent on the company you are So, if so, your company is an Azure shop, they might go with SAP on Azure. If they're a GCP shop, they might even go on SAP on GCP. Yes, yes, really, really, very, very important thing which you bring that the technology part is maybe maybe the last maybe twenty percent or let's let's say twenty five percent. But the how the business is driven because for any organization, SAP is their mission critical applications, the process, and all those things. again it 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 will it may take years to develop again the entire sap system for any organization and it is not that uh, on a regular basis they want to move in this cloud and later this cloud it is a very big decision for any organization to to inherit like as you mentioned that you work in some move to cloud kind of initiative for your customer so understanding the business aspect the people come first like i think that is what like i get a just from your uh, your insights that the people come first and the people comfort need to be there then technology is there even google is having a supported sap instances and all all the nitty gritty thing again azure is having the same kind of thing aws is having and if i say ibm is having oracle is working and there are alibaba world of alibaba and other cloud provider everyone is having support for sap but the business yeah sure just one small thing many times people think that one of the reasons to choose a technology okay is for example uh, the how good the technology is which is very good important obviously but actually in my experience of over 10 years what i have seen it is also much dependent on what technology your resources already know no, that exactly becomes that. actually the single most driver because see you have to understand something from a business perspective they don't give a lot of care about technology technology to them is an enabler for me i am developing this awesome stateless scalable resilient thing on kubernetes and you using prometheus grafana argo very good all of that is very good they will say okay okay do it no problem 
but they really don't care whether you you are using GitOps to deploy or you are going into the VM and deploying. Very frankly, right? So that is why another very important thing that I learned early in my career is that technology is an enabler to business. So I always try to think from that perspective, and that has helped me, Garner. And if and I will tell you, your clients will also start respecting you more. and they will look out for you if you keep this into all of your aspects that i am only doing this for them many times we developers we architect we get into that deep dive no i need to create that awesome architecture that will make sense it has to be this it has to be that i need dr have has your client asked for dr okay. do they really care that if the region goes down does it still need to be available only then you do all of that right that is the idea yeah this is this is really important they, again it's kind of a thinking like a architect and and it's all about the mindset development to know the each and every aspect from the cost but again the resources resources here is like a people people come first know your team that what skills they have and how you can quickly upskill them rather than things need maybe take few weeks to few months again depend upon the everyone's time and availability plus interest area need to be there then only then only i believe things things can work okay yeah there is there are a lot of what i can say uh messages for you because people are really enjoying the talk so so yeah uh, really thank you everyone for for sharing and enjoying but uh if you have any again any question feel free to drop we are here again to talk for a few more minutes and 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 let, let's try to take some questions uh there is a good a question which i really like i think we should address this Uh, so Anoop is asking, should I go to cloud service provider company or startup cloud tech company for volunteering to learn? Hope it will be option. What's your opinion? Yeah. Yeah. So very frankly, see, I will tell you that normal. So I actually got when I uh, started leaving Accenture, I actually got three to four offers. Okay, mm-hmm. during my notice period, one of them was with a startup. They were mostly paying the same kind of money. Mm-hmm. but obviously i knew that startups might be a little bit more stressful right because they were even saying that we move at a high pace startups people it will happen at high pace chirag was in a startup right cloud kinetics they scale or awesome. some you will get a lot say people i i have worked with people in samsung who are now vp of engineering in grofers mm-hmm. can you imagine he is the engineering vp vice president for say a 300 odd engineering team which is a huge thing right because they joined the startup the startup also scaled they also scaled along with them so those are some of the benefits but at my age for example i thought that i might not go there so from a learning perspective very frankly that is what i want to tell you it's very much dependent on you i have seen people who have gone into tcs mm-hmm. right and from tcs they have cracked apple okay i have i have people i personally know who were in tcs for say 10 11 years and then the day they thought that they will leave they joined apple so that is the level of um, kind of experience they had even in a company like tcs which we take for granted see even in tcs tcs is doing so multi million billion dollar deals somebody is architecting them also right exactly obviously right. it's not like that there is nothing there you you would just see that level of people you see they are paid less and you think now they are not doing that much right but somebody in tcs is also having to think about all of this so it's more about your options so personally i would say it's also dependent on your age mm-hmm. the kind of time you can because a startup will demand a lot from you that is what i feel okay personally and i have spoken to people so they say it will demand a lot from you it's not that they will ask you to work on weekends or something not like that it might, it will demand something for you but a, a mature company will maybe not demand that much from you right mm-hmm. so it's all upon your age so i i got recently married maybe 2 years back at that time i was thinking i will switch to bangalore if there is so much pressure maybe if i was 24 25 i would have joined that startup i don't know but it doesn't matter say today i am in a very established company okay so there is not that much pressure but still i have that thing i am right i am doing a lot of things parallelly so for example chira also knows right i am extremely active on linkedin maybe not as active as him maybe but i am still quite active on linkedin i am doing a lot of things so something for example i am working on a book deal with pact maybe that will come uh, i am doing my mtech from yeah. which pilani so many things so there are many ways you can still add value to your career even if you say in a kind of some people call 
uh, um, that kind of stale, no growth opportunity companies. So people are getting growth there also, right? Everybody, TCS also has high positions. You just need to scale them. But yes, it's true. One thing I personally feel, switching is a little bit good. So yes, sometimes people also get a lot of experience in the same company. I think Chirag, you stayed in your last company for a long time, right? Right. That was my but, first job, actually. Yeah. 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 You know that. Yeah. I, I, because of that learning, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I can, and yeah. you are where today, which is good, which is good. But you got that opportunity. But many people. So the idea is you leave a company if you're not getting that opportunity, whether it's a startup or it's an established company, no matter what. So never make yourself comfortable. Always try to push yourself. The moment you feel that, no, my office work is getting comfortable, take something else. Create wow. something else. Ask your people. Say, for example, today, what I, I was just speaking to my boss on phone a few days back, and I told him that, what else can I do for you? So, for example, there are many new things today happening around sustainability, innovation, blockchain. I'm like, okay, let's try to get involved in some of this. So never mm -hmm. let yourself be comfortable because for us IT professionals, mm -hmm. comfort means less pay. As simple as that. If you want a high paying job, you must do something which is a little bit more than other people. That is why the company will pay you that little bit more also. Exactly. Yeah, really, really agree on that part. I, okay, maybe I can share a bit around my, my journey also. Like I started again as a startup company and I was a one-man army, by the way. Okay, I shifted from the northern part of India to Calcutta. As I mentioned that I started my career in Calcutta and it was totally different. Uh, again, the food-wise, the language-wise, the weather-wise, everything different for me. And yes, and uh, I believe I got a support from a uh, local AWS team because I was working very closely. And especially, uh, I made, I think, uh, thousands of friends, if I say, from the events and all those communities. Like And, and I enjoyed each and every aspect. Till that, I know... I know the roads of Calcutta by my on my tips that how to go on which way and how to wear the transportation and food. Yeah, literally enjoyed. So it gave me a, a good start of my career. And then, yes, and I moved to the multiple part of country and then I move out of country. And yeah, it is, it is something that growth going. And that is where the continuous learning helped me. And I am trying to add the value for my customer. As Toja, you covered that, yes. Be a customer centric and it will always helpful and continuous learning is there it may happen today if i'm preparing for some certification it is not helpful for a work but at least i have gone through some concepts which may again may or may not is always there there is no hundred percent that we are going to use but uh, something some ideas can come and we can solve some maybe a small issue some big issue and uh, and it will be a win-win situation Exactly. So just one last thing, for example, so Chirag, I have followed your career very closely, right? So you have always kind of given a lot of certification exams. I have seen like yes. Google Cloud, Azure, AWS, you are my kind of, maybe for example, you are not even using some of those, but still you went ahead and taken that and because no knowledge goes to waste. Even when I was in Samsung, we used to use a source control called Perforce. Okay. And it, and I, I I actually at that time I learned a lot about source control. I was one of the kind of very good in source control. I could do those branch strategies, merging, uh, rollback, very complicated things. I learned that they are still helping me today when I have moved away from Perforce onto GitHub. Right. So that is the idea, right? Knowledge will not go to waste. You can invest whatever you are. Okay. Right. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So yeah, let let's take this question also. Okay, because yeah, we are we are nearby the time because I know this talk it's our it's our the favorite talk. I can talk about cloud for days and week and same with you. But yeah, let, let's take a few questions and then then yeah. Okay, so John is asking, what personal project can you suggest if you have no professional cloud experience? Exactly. So maybe you can share your journey that as you mentioned. Yeah. So I will I will tell you what I did. Okay, so when I was in 2015 at that time, now I don't do that. But at that time, I actually developed my CV on AWS S3 static website. And okay. I now know that Forrest Brazil from A-Cloud Guru, who now joined Google, he actually had has a challenge called Resume Challenge. Yes, where yes, he yes, actually yes. asking people. But I did it that back when it was not even a Resume Challenge. Okay. okay. So what I did, this normal small HTML5 JavaScript, I created a website. 
So now what you can do, for example, you can create a very simple static kind of website, host it on maybe Kubernetes, host it on GKE, wherever you want to host it, you host it, you create that link, do everything, DNS mapping and everything, do all the entire shit, but it can be a very sample thing. Then for example, you have a comment section or contact me section. So somebody, when he clicks on that contact me, you let them give their email ID and password. The moment they click, you use, say, for example, AWS SNS or AWS SES to send you an email so that you get a link that, okay, this guy wants to contact me. Something like that. Okay. You create some sort of maybe analytics on top of it. Whatever you feel like it. So you can do that as a very starting point. It is very easy to do and it gives a value. When you go to, I have seen, for example, I will give a very, when I was in PWC, I was working a little bit on Power BI and Tableau okay. because I was in that BI thing. So this is pre-cloud era. Okay. And I once was going to take an interview for a person, okay? And that guy, I said, okay, can you share me CV? He shared a Tableau dashboard. Wow. Link. I still remember this after maybe it was in 2014. And I hired that guy then and there. Wow. It yeah. was the impression that made on me, right? Mm -hmm. It's huge. Yeah. Okay. That is, that is put efforts and then show that what is the expertise he or she is carrying yeah it is exactly. like, to know. say yep. somebody is saying to you can you show me your cv i might uh, you share that link and tell them that this is a site hosted on kubernetes mm, exactly. right and that will add some level of value i am even if it is five percent i'm not saying just because you have hosted a static site on yeah, kubernetes you will get the job no there are hundreds of more questions also but even when you do that, you think about those non-functional requirements. Think that, is my site scalable? Can my site handle, say, tomorrow, uh, 1,000 requests? So all of this, if you keep in mind, then you are in a good place. So that is a good personal project you can, you guys can do. Right, right. This is, this is, this is valuable insight. The same like I always try to follow because having your own portfolio is the most important thing. And uh, until till that, I'm doing the same. Maybe let, let me share again. So... Again, there is again no cost nowadays involved in all those things. I, I, I am I am having my domain since my college days. And again, you can visit. I am using again OCI, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. They are giving a very great free tier for virtual machine, which is having again the ARM-based processor, six gig of RAM, one core mm -hmm. is out of the box, is free. And I'm using Cloudflare. So I integrated my front end, like you can see the delivery part from Cloudflare, DNS is hosted, and then my instance is running. As as Surja mentioned, it can be simple. Like, again, I'm not, again, fond of coding. So for me, WordPress is a saver. Okay. Exactly. So I just put some WordPress things, some make it fancy, jazzy, and kind of some, some pictures which I clicked, and I feel that it can be a good because I clicked some cloud pictures with a nice weather. And I, I just uh, pasted it, and uh, and again I make the uh, contact form, and yeah, now yes. it is dropping. If you fill the contact form instantly, I will get a mail, and I will know that like who are you and what you want to talk with me, and if I think something important for sure, I will respond. The same like the containers part again. I own a one domain name containers on cloud.com. If anyone wants to check, you check. I just put a Docker instance, the WordPress and MySQL container. And it is live. Uh, again, it has nothing like because uh, again, time and we need to balance. But I just want to test that how I can make it live. And they, like I have a three, four domains, which is live. It is not that I want to looking for some business out of them, but it's a practice for me. It's like for me as a hands-on experience that, yes, I have tried how the things are working, maybe some kind of troubleshooting, how to even read logs. That is what I learned by failing multiple times. Uh, maybe Apache and Nginx logs, and then then it it gave me a a great learning uh, till date. Okay, so one last question. Let's cover, and then we can wrap wrap up after that. Okay, so Yash is asking that how do you manage so much thing? Yeah, obviously, it's not easy. You are doing your masters, you are doing many other things. You are now um, into the contribution to maybe a writing a book, and uh, yeah. Okay, so Yash is saying that how, how you are managing so many things. I am too a working professional, want to appear for exams and expand my knowledge along with managing work-life balance. What's your take on that? So see, it's all about your priorities, okay? So I always think that my job is at risk. 
Okay. okay, and I actually feel that most of our jobs might be at risk. The way these college guys are catching up on us, very frankly, I will tell you. Okay, the way they are upskilling themselves, the way they are, I mean, uh, you need to maintain. If you say, for example, if you are getting a high salary, you need to justify it. Right. So how do you justify your high salary compared to somebody else who has done the same certifications, maybe even more? Mm -hmm. So if that is your priority, then you always start making time for it. Right. So this is my extra. Say tomorrow, for example, say I have a good job and somebody asks me, why should I keep you? Why should I not hire that guy with five years of experience? So then I say that, yes, you can do. But this is who I am. I have these two books. I have a master's. I have I am this uh, kind of the co-admin of the CNCF Kolkata chapter, for example, I'm just saying some of the things that is added after what you are. So if you think like that, okay, because I will very frankly, I'm telling you that you never know. I have been in this industry for 10 years, but I know people who have been in this industry for 30 years also. And the only thing that successful people and uh, unsuccessful in a sense, I don't judge somebody being unsuccessful just because they have been a little bit unsuccessful in their work life, because life is more than that, right? But you need to put that focus. If you put that focus that, OK, this is what I need, something that differentiates me from somebody else. So that differentiation is the only thing. And if you keep that in mind, automatically, you will start doing all of these things. So think that your job is at risk. Think that you are getting paid more than you deserve. And then try to get paid as much as you actually need. Meaning try to learn yourself to that level. That is the only thing. I want to actually even do a PhD after my master's. I am already starting to speak to people on that. Maybe I will do it. It might take five, seven years, but I actually want, and that's a good backup plan also. If some day my job goes for whatever reason, right? I can end up being a lecturer, right? So that's yeah. uh, just what you're saying, right? Basically. Really, really appreciate that. Yeah, you started thinking it's, it's something, yeah, we need to think about, we need to come out of our comfort zone and think that, yeah, every day is, is a risky and we need to put effort to make a win. That yes, today I have done something and satisfied the work which I am doing, or again independently, individually are doing. And yes, don't don't think yeah, I don't think because you are keep learning, you wanna shine. I'm pretty sure maybe uh, we, we 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 can again catch up in near future. But uh, really important, and I I really want to com compliment here the the way nowadays are learning, especially the college students, and the way they are picking that technology. It is really uh, remarkable. It is not that. Any experience is saying we need to, uh, there is again no competition. It's, it's a compliment. It is something that the industry is moving much faster. And the, and maybe a 10 year back when we were in college, the resources, the internet was luxury. Exactly. Nowadays, in last five years, I, saying, I think internet is necessity. Without internet, our days, our day not started, not finished even. Right. So, so it is, it is something the priority need to be there. And again, resources are there. It is not that just reaching out to people asking, can you guide me how to learn cloud? Resources are there. First, made your mind that, yes, you want to learn. Maybe again, uh, I want to recall two things. Uh, four weeks ago, I had a session with Ranga. Uh, Ranga is very famous, uh, like uh, in the in the community known as in 28 minutes. He shares the concept that like I, I, I was also curious that why you choose your branding as a in 28 minutes. So he shared that, yeah, because there is a science behind that. If you studied for 30 to 40 minutes a day, it doesn't mean that you need to uh, study eight hours a day back, uh, continuously. We are not talking about uh, academics subjects here. It's your practical and it is going to give you your bread and butter. So maybe 30 minutes, if you make your plan to cover a very small topic and then it can be again via podcast. Nowadays, I'm a big fan of podcast. I go out for a walk. I just plug in cloudskills.fm. Again, I can tell you Mike Pfeiffer is as a good friend of mine. I also appeared in that podcast and um, I schedule a session with him. But yeah, it, uh, it needs to be rescheduled. But for sure, I will bring him. And, uh, and then again, we will hear from him. There are a lot of good cloud podcasts out there. You can listen if you're again fond of that. Reinvent videos there. Azure is having a lot of good content. Azure Friday by, by Scott Henselman. Very quality things. I, I follow all those things. And uh, just to share how I 
I, I started doing the community part. I watched one course by Scott Hanselman. It's on plural side. Uh, back in 2013, 14 again. Okay. And he mentioned about because at that time, I don't think there was a big craze of meetup. And even I was not aware meetup.com. But yeah, he was sharing because in US, the meetups were common and especially the pizzas and swags. And, and that, that things gradually come to, to, you can say, two to three years and 2015, 16, when the cloud started picking in India, the community started growing, people are starting putting efforts and the use cases started coming, developer communities are getting strong. So decide your priority, guys. Resources are there. Turja shared a lot of valuable thing that how he made his mind that while doing some project even he has a external support from the specialized partner but he came he came out the, from his comfort zone and start thinking that what is vpc even he's a developer he may think of that i don't need to know networking my job is to write the code or scripting or maybe as a team lead just manage people properly that work is happening so so very very important that you take a decision you understand what you want to do and uh, what are the priority everyone has the same 24 hours and uh, again giving a time is, is is a personal choice for where you want to see yourself really appreciate turja i think you cover a Thank lot you. of things. and uh, any last thought from your side no 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 i that's what i'm saying right whatever you have said is completely so technology is democratized education is also democratized right so it doesn't matter. You guys just do whatever you want to. It's not that you have to learn cloud. It's so that it will help you in your career only. It has helped me actually. Today, I'm very frankly saying that if I was maybe not into cloud, I might not have been able to be even uh, this much successful, even in the community. People are today listening to me mostly because I, I work a lot in cloud, right? So people are more interested in emerging technologies, right? Even if enterprises don't consume them still people say today somebody who is a blockchain or metaverse today the most important thing that has happened is metaverse right if for example you are speaking on metaverse people will listen to you as simple as that so a few days maybe in the future people will pay huge sums of money for metaverse ex experience people also right and i actually am now starting for example as i'm trying to learn more about sustainability right. because that is also going to be one of the future because cloud will stay maybe but one day everybody will be cloud certified but then what is the next thing you can do to differentiate so always think in your mind one last thing and if you do this how do i differentiate myself from the mass right. if you can manage that you will be successful great great yeah again guys thank you for joining and you can connect with turja his linkedin profile link is in the youtube description and as well as it is going live on uh, uh, LinkedIn itself. So connect with him. If you have any query, reach out to him. Again, feedback is always welcome. Reach out to me, reach out to him. And uh, with your feedback, we can again plan the another session in the coming week. What you want to hear or what what you what you want to hear more again. Uh, so, so we can prepare something and again, we can schedule. And again, stay safe, subscribe to channel, share in your circle so that more and more People will aware that how an experienced person move from a development to now reaching at the director level position as well as handling the multiple different initiative like thinking about masters and maybe the PhDs already in, in mindset. That is the most important thing that he already have mind there that the, what will be his next journey post that. And uh, there is a book writing initiative. Even I have contributed in five to six book as a technical reviewer. It was a, it was a good journey. Again, time need to be there. The interest need to be there. It, things, things can work out. And uh, again, stay connected. Take care. Bye-bye. Enjoy the Thank weekend. You. Take care. Bye.